This video will show how to create an external flow simulation around an SAE car body. It will also show how to calculate the lift force that is applied to the car. The key to running a flow simulation on a car body is that the body cannot be just a surface. The model needs to have thickness in order for the flow simulation to calculate how the air moves around the car. The principles that will be shown can also be applied to aerospace applications as well with only a little modification. To start, open your model, add in SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation by going under Tools, Add-ins, and selecting SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation. Go under the Flow Simulation tab in the Command Manager and click the Project Wizard. Using the Project Wizard is a very easy way to input the settings needed to run the study. In the first window, give the study a name and click Next. Choose the units as well as the precision for the study. For this study, the units will be IPS. In the next window, the type of flow can be selected, which will be external, the options of exclude internal spaces as well as exclude cavities without flow conditions can be chosen as well. Gravity can also be added into the study if so desired. Once next is clicked, the fluid can be specified that will be used in the study. Choose the fluid, which in this case is air, and click next. The wall conditions on the next page can be left as the defaults. On the page after that, the initial conditions can be set. In this study, we'll set the velocity in the z-direction to be 60 miles per hour to simulate a car driving at that speed. With the initial conditions set, next can be clicked. Here the results and geometry resolution can be changed. If you have a surface that you thicken for the shell of the car, you'll want to select the box next to manual specification of the minimum wall thickness and set that value to less than that of the thickness of the car body. The level of the initial mesh can also be set here, which for initial calculations can be set to around 5. Once set, click Finish and the computational domain box will appear around the model. This box shows where the simulation will be solved. To change the dimensions of this box, click Computational Domain in the Study Property Manager and drag the arrows to resize or right-click the computational domain and select Edit Definition. Here you will be able to input specific numbers for the domain size. In our case, we want to make sure that there is adequate space around the car so that we will see the full effects of the simulation. In our model, a ground plane was created to simulate the road, so a boundary condition needs to be inserted in order to specify the conditions of that road. To do this, right-click Boundary Conditions and select Insert. Choose the top surface of the road and then under the type select wall. Here there are two options, real wall and ideal wall. With the real wall option, you can specify the temperature, the heat transfer coefficient, or the roughness of the surface. In this case, we'll choose the ideal wall to simplify the problem. At this point, goals can be set up for areas and surfaces of interest. In this study, a surface goal was created looking at the overall force in the y direction on the car. This will show if there is a lift force or a downward force acting on the car. To create the surface goal, right-click Goals and select Insert Surface Goal. Select all the surfaces that have portions normal to the Y direction. From the list underneath, check the box next to Normal Forces in the Y direction. This study can now be run by right-clicking the study name and selecting Run. Once the study has finished running, there are a number of different ways to view the results. Cut plots showing certain parameters can be inserted by right-clicking Cut Plot under Results and selecting Insert. The plane as well as the parameter can be chosen based on what you want displayed. Here, the plane running through the middle of the car is chosen and it is displaying the velocity in the Z direction. Another way to see the flow is by inserting a flow trajectory into the model by right-clicking Flow Trajectory under Results. For this, you need to have a plane that is offset from your model in order to specify where the flow starts from. With the plane selected, the number as well as the type of flow lines can be chosen. There are many different parameters that can be displayed using either of these two methods. The goal that was created can be viewed by right-clicking the goal plot and selecting Insert. Choose the goal created earlier and click the check mark. This will display the values that were calculated. The goal is showing how much lift or downward force is on the car. In this case, there is about 16 pounds of force pushing up on the car due to the speed and shape of the car. You have to remember to subtract the weight of the car from this force. 
After doing that, the force is in the negative y direction, which is a good thing, in that the car will remain firmly on the ground while driving. I hope this video has been helpful in showing you how to set up and run an external flow simulation on a car body.